Oh snap, Blaze is going live. Hey, good day, good day, good day, good day, good day. Thanks for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I am the host, the one they call Brian Clay Skips. And like I said, what I try to do is I try to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. To get people to understand right now, there's no shortcut in life. Only thing comes fast is trouble. Easy to get into, hard to get out. Hey, what I'm going to do is today, I'm going to speak about this one individual. But I'm going to get started by a song. Okay, I know everybody loves my singing. I know they'll hey, save the donation. Okay, the song title, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. Okay, now, and he's bad. Bad Leroy Brown, the baddest man in the whole downtown. Badder than old King Kong and meaner than a junkyard dog. Now, Leroy, he's a gambler, and he likes his fancy clothes, and he liked to wave his diamond ring under everybody's nose. He had... A custom Continental, he got an Eldorado too. He got a 32 gun in his pocket full of a fun. He got a razor in his shoes, and he's bad, bad Leroy Brown. The baddest man in the whole damn town. Badder than old King Kong and meaner than a junkyard dog. Right now, folks, listen. From my understanding, even as a kid, okay, I remember hearing this song. And everybody used to sing this song. And everybody said, you know what? That song was made for... The late Leroy Nicky Barnes. Okay? Anybody know anything about Leroy Nicky Barnes? Leroy Nicky Barnes was what they once called Mr. Untouchable. Okay? Why and how did he get that name? Because at one point in time, his rise through the street, he used to catch so many different drug cases. So many different cases. And right now, he's to beat him. You know, he's to beat him. So he was the Teflon Don before John Gotti. So what happened is, one day in particular, he was on the New York Times front page the magazine. And what happened was, President Jimmy Carter happened to be in town. And he seen that. They had a picture of Nicky Barnes in a suit. And like he say, American flag. And right now is saying, Mr. Untouchable. Jimmy Carter happened to be the president. And he saw that. And basically what he say, get him. We got to get him. They want to get Leroy Nicky Barnes. Bingo. Who was Nicky Barnes? Sit back and think about it. How did he start it? How did his life end it? Let's sit back and think about it. They got Will Smith. Will Smith is signed up to play Leroy Nicky Barnes and The Council on Netflix. That came out a few years ago. And we've been waiting. And from my understanding, it's supposed to be going to production sometime this year and it's supposed to be hitting the screen in 2023. So let's give a brief history and talk about who is Nikki Barnes. Nikki was born in Harlem, Manhattan, New York on October 15, 1933. Nikki Barnes grew up to become one of the most infamous crime boss of Harlem in 1970. They say Barnes left home in his early youth to escape from his abusive alcoholic father. But ultimately, this led him down a path of crime and addiction as he began drug dealing. After serving time in prison and meeting members of the Colombo and Lucchese family, Barnes was taught how to organize his own drug traffic organization. Sit back and think about it. They can say right now, he came from, uh, 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 his father was an alcoholic. And right now he escaped. And to me right now, anybody know anything about Nikki? Uneducated, uh, right now was addicted to drugs. He was addicted to drugs. So here it is at one point in time, he was addicted so bad that guess what? He was eating garbage, eating food out the garbage can because that's how much he was lost. And a lot of times people don't understand right now is when you lose yourself, when you lose yourself, when you lose all respect for yourself and you start, you know what I'm saying, indulging in drugs and you become a crackhead, you become a dope fiend, you lost every sense, you don't have no respect. So for the, to survive, you do any and everything it takes to survive. So during that period of time when he was addicted to drugs, guess what? He was eating 
food out of the garbage can. What happened? What happened? He wound up going away. He wound up going away doing time. And as they say, he was in Green Haven. And he met with members of the Colombo and the Lucchese crime family. And what happened? He made a connection. And from my understanding right now, as I remember the story, is what there in Green Haven, it was a big racial rise about to happen. And what happened was, Nicky, being who he was, and the type of power and respect that he had amongst the black inmates in Green Haven at the time, and he was able to, you know, come together and put stuff on hold. And the same thing with the guys, as far as the Italian that was in there, they was able to come together and squash a major war between the black and the white. So with that alone, they look at the power that this man had. So what they did was, bingo, they form a relationship with him. And from understanding, one of the guys in particular, you know, saying Crazy Joe Gallup, you know, here it is when Nick got out, he became Nick Cadet. Nick took and started developing what they call, in 1972, Barnes founded the council, a seven-man organization molded after the Italian American Mafia family. The purpose of the council was to peacefully maintain control of the drug supply of Harlem, while also helping to solve dispute amongst criminal and other drug-related issue. The wealth and power of the council grew rapidly during the 70s, with Barnes himself at the height of his power worth a reported $50 million. Barnes, unafraid to flaunt his wealth, he was often seen driving his fancy cars, wearing one of many of his hundreds of telemade Italian suits. However, upon grabbing attention of the President of the United States, Jimmy Carter, life swiftly changed for the drug kingpin. Okay, once again, people in life, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Even though right now he's out there, um, making his money, doing his thing. He established a council. Like he established basically like what they call a round table. Different people controlling, maintaining, and keeping everything in check. Keeping all like, you know, saying the violence or the negative, the nonsense down. So they can run a smooth operation. But what happened? When you out there, you know, right now flaunting, you out there, you know what I'm saying? Wearing all the fancy clothes and the jewelry or whatever. You know what? Oh, you got a name. One thing about it. Back then, they didn't have no social media. So being that they didn't have no super social media, they got the street. And one thing about the street, the street talk. People talk. People want to know who's who and what's what. And back then, like I say, I was a little snotty-nosed kid. But anybody that grew up in the metropolitan area, whether you grew up in Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, especially Manhattan, everybody heard the name of, you know, Leroy, Nicky, Barnes. And back then, right now, was guess what? He was the man. He was, you know, everybody wanted to be him. Everybody wanted to be, like, you know how everybody say, like Mike, try to be like Mike? No, like Nick. Every young boy that was growing up back then, they didn't want to be doctors. They didn't want to be lawyers. They didn't want to be policemen. They didn't want to be, you know, politicians. You know what? They want to be Leroy Nicky Barnes. And folks, that's how lost we was as a society, as a community. Because once again, what they seen, this man coming down the street with his big fancy car, okay, dressing like GQ, with his jewelry, telemay Italian suits, with his fancy shoes, with all the beautiful women. Whoa, guess what? We want to be just like him. And it's sad, but that's how lost we was. Because to me, or to every little boy that was coming up, damn, that was the picture of what we thought was success. Folks, listen, as time went on, like you say, the council, powerful organization. What happened when Nick appeared on the New York Times magazine, you know what I'm saying, that suit, you know what I'm saying, with, you know, Mr. Untouchable? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. He went down. They built the case. From my understanding, they established that law, 21 U.S.C. 848, for Mr. Leroy Nicky Barnes. What happened? 
he got convicted. When he got convicted, he went away. Now here it is, sit back and think about it. As they say, he worth fifty million dollars, not five hundred thousand, not fifty thousand. They say not one million, not two million, not five, ten, twenty. They say he's worth fifty million. So the difference is right now, very powerful individual, having investment into real estate, housing, um, you what? You know what I'm saying? Car wash, burger place, you name it. But yet, in still regards to what? It doesn't matter how powerful you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much cars, how much jewelry, whatever. You cannot take that with you. So you got convicted. And he was sentenced to life. And what happened? Slowly but surely. You know what I'm saying? Right now, even with the council, they talk about we are brothers. I am my brother keeper. Right now, is guess what? We're going to treat each other the same with love, respect, and human compassion. As he was away. Everything started falling down. You know, once again, he used to be one of the powerful men in New York City or on the East Coast border. All that changed when you go to prison. Because once again, these guys that was your brothers, these guys that you love and care about, these guys that, you know what, y'all supposed to be family. What started happening? What started happening? Everything started going left. Once again, you know what, you had guys, allegedly, was driving his cars. You have members that was allegedly sleeping with his wife, his girlfriend. Wow. And my, my brother Keeper. We got a bond. But yet in still regards to what? You in jail. You got life. You not Nicky Barnes no more. You not Top Dog no more. It's like right now is everybody what? Fighting for that number one position. Everybody want to be the next Nicky Barnes. Everybody want to be the leader. Being that you out the way, here it is. The United States government took care of you. Where you at? Terry Hutt? Marion? Where are you? But you are in the United States Penitentiary. You Nicky Barnes. But once again, one of the most powerful individuals, now you don't got no more juice because you're in jail. Now, here it is, you find out that, you know what I'm saying, one of the guys banging your wife, driving your car. One other guy, you know what I'm saying, part of the council, banging your girl, your, your, your tenderoni. So what happened? You know, they're not taking care of some of the things they're supposed to take care of. They violating all the codes, all the rules. But yet and still, you got life. So what happened is, you send word back to the street, okay? You're trying to flex your muscle because you're a killer. You got that killer mentality. You got that Kobe Bryant. You got that, you know, that, that Michael Jordan. You got that LeBron James. You got that killer mentality. Because the only thing you know is right now how to win. But now you're trying to call a shot. You're trying to call a shot for the United States Penitentiary because you're the bad, bad Leroy the St. Brown. You are Nikki Barnes. But once again, hey, you know what? They violating, they doing this, they doing that, they doing this. I want them out of here. I want them gone. And what they telling you, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of it. We're going to take care of it. We're going to take care of it. Weeks go by. Months go by. Years go by. They don't take care of nothing. Desperate people do desperate things. And what the hell y'all think happened to Nick? Once again, had all that power. Say who lived and who died. Had all the money in the world. Now he's hopeless. Now who he once was, he's no longer. All these guys right now that's supposed to be his brother because he was there. They love him. They care about him. They turned their back on him. So what did he do? You know, right now, because he couldn't take care of the situation that he, the way he wanted to take care of, by the street code, by the street law. You know what I'm saying? Eye for eye, two for two. If somebody disrespect you, somebody violate, you can take care of them. You're going to hit them. You're going to murder them because you got that killer mentality. That's all you know. Now, nobody listening to you no more. You don't got no more power. Everybody give you the run around. Yeah, we're going to hit them. We're going to take care of this. And nothing's being done. So guess what? If you couldn't kill them by your words or you couldn't kill them by your authority, guess what? What do you decide to do? He went against everything that he once believed in. And what he did was he made a deal. He cooperated. He snitched. He went against the grain. And right now, like I said, a lot of times people got mixed feeling about that. Yo, wait a minute here. You can't do that. You know, you're supposed to be true to the game. Why that man supposed to be true to the game when the game wasn't true to him? See, people, I think a lot of times people got it twisted. 
A lot of times people want you to believe or think. That's all. We are brainwashed, folks. First four right now is, guess what? Nobody should never even put themselves in that predicament in the first place. But being that everybody put themselves in that predicament and played the game, now the game is how you're going to win. And that's what he did. That man, while he was in jail, he, he right now, he didn't, have a, he didn't have a diploma. He didn't have no education. But he wanted to get a master's degree. He wanted being able to speak three different languages. So he was trilingual. And not only that, like I said right now is, guess what? He made a deal. And he changed his whole life around. So once again, people, the moral of the story is this, man. After 21 years, after 21 years of being incarcerated, he was finally released. New name, new identity. And not only that, he brought down a lot of people, his former, you know what I'm saying, council members. Because what he felt betrayed him. What he felt right now, cross. What he felt like, you know, here it is, these guys, you know what, spat in his face. Disrespect them. You know what? A lot of times people do not understand this with the street. You wasn't loyal to the council organization. Y'all were loyal to the street. And the difference is right now, when you left the street, it's no more loyalty. When you got that life sentence and that gate shut on you, boom, it was like this. Like New Edition say, is this the end? Mama used to tell me it's going to happen, but she didn't tell me when. Listen, folks, here it is right now. I think Will Smith going to smash that movie. I think they're going to do a great job. And right now, like I said, I think it'll be worth it. But the difference is right now is let's stop celebrating the life of the drug dealers, the stick-up kid, the killer, the gangster. Let's start celebrating the life of the good people, the nine to five, the mom, the dad that did it right the first time, that never went anywhere, that more or less like did whatever it took, working two, three, four jobs. You know what I'm saying? Right now, cleaning houses. Doing everything they can take to survive and take care of their kids. To raise them to the best of their ability that didn't take no shortcut. That's who's supposed to get all the credit. Not the drug dealer. Not the street people. Not the hustlers. Right now, was guess what? We was all a bunch of low life that took shortcut. And right now, was guess what? It bite us in the butt. So the real heroes are the people that did it right the first time. Hey, listen. Here it is right now. Hit the like button. Subscribe. If you want to know more about my story, this is who I am. My name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. Get your signed copy of the Beyond Lucky book, The Brian Glaze Gibbs Story, a true story of crack money, murder, and redemption by emailing me, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. Also, folks, listen, man, get healthy. Right now is get healthy. Any of y'all out there, that's listen to this message. If you suffer from high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high weight, high sugar, get your Panoxol. As I keep saying right now, we got insurance on our cell phone. We got insurance on our cars. We got insurance on our apartment, on our house. But yet and still right now, we don't have no health insurance. We don't have no life insurance. Right now, folks, get help. And this, like I said right now, anybody that's suffering from high blood pressure, high sugar, High cholesterol, high weight, get your panoxol. Right now, a natural ingredient that will basically put your high blood pressure, your high cholesterol, your high weight, your high sugar, will put it in place. Listen, like I said right now is, my name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. I was once the problem. Now I'm seeking to be part of the solution to that problem. Because guess what? If you're not the solution, then you're the problem. Peace, love, and prosperity. Rest in peace to Leroy Nicky Barnes. During the brief period of time that I was around him, I learned a lot from him, man. And what I'm just trying to say right now, folks, listen, there's no shortcut in life. Only thing come fast, trouble. Easy to get into, hard to get out. One love. Thank you so much, Brian. Gifts. I love this book so much. I mean, I was a fan of your YouTube channel, but now I'm like a real up close and personal fan. I really love what you have going on here. And not only that, but I too was once lost. And now I'm with them. So thank you, Brian, for this autographed copy. 
I appreciate you. Yo, Glaze, I just got to my favorite part of your book. This is Out of Prison as a New Person. So, page 308, May of 1998. That's actually when I had the pleasure of meeting you and we worked together on that 10.30 to 3 a.m. shift, which was crazy. Um, my respect level just went up like 10 more notches for you. So I knew about your past. I knew about everything that had gone on. But what I didn't know is you were going from $40,000 a day to, I think we were making $12 an hour there, that night shift, something crazy. So for you to be able to have that work ethic of going from slinging easy rocks to slinging heavy packages and uh, working that night shift and just being the positive person you were that whole time and offering encouragement to everybody that worked that shift. Have you checked your tire pressure today? I don't have a flat. Have you checked your blood pressure today? No. I don't feel sick.